Hello, and welcome back to another episode of NBA Today. I'm RJ. And I'm Summer. Hey RJ, have you ever been in a situation where you saw someone in need of help and you didn't know what to do? Yes, I have. And I know there are some other people that have as well. Let's go over to Duncan and Madison to see how others help when they think no one is watching. Hi, and welcome to What, what Would, would you, you Do? do? I'm Madison. I'm Duncan the Dunkey. <laughs> oh my god, are you okay? <laughs> Stop. Hello, class. welcome to What Would You Do? It's a game show. Um, so, what were you thinking when she fell? I thought she was like hurt, but then only her stuff fell, so I just helped her pick it up. And why did you help her? Because that's the right thing to do. Faith! You drop it. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, for you. Welcome to What Would You Do? What were you thinking when he dropped his money? I was thinking he will be really upset when he's gonna find out he lost them. And why did you return the money back? Because it's the right thing to do. It's not my money, it's his. Hey, hey, no, oh. no, no. Come on, let it go, let it be. Go. Welcome to What Would You Do? What were you thinking when uh, he was trying to bully her? Well, I saw it and I say, well, this guy is not good for her, so let it mm. stop it. And why did you help? Uh, I don't know, I'm her friend. Good answer. Nice, guys. Thanks for that. It's very interesting to see how people act in tough situations. I agree. Since I've been at Montbird, I've seen a lot of people and learned a lot about their different cultures. Me too, Summer. This is my sixth year here at Montbird, and I've learned new things about people and cultures that I would have never known if I hadn't gone here. Let's hand it over to Andrea to find out how teachers view cultures other than their own and what they have learned from their students. Thanks, guys. We're here with Ms. Martinez now to ask her a few questions about culture. So, Mrs. Martinez, what culture were you raised around growing up? I think I was raised uh, probably very typical American suburban family. Uh, we lived outside of Detroit in a nice suburb. My dad worked for General Motors. My mom was a secretary. And it was a very comfortable uh, childhood. Wow, and so what have you learned from your students, like the most important thing about these various cultures since you were raised in America? What I've learned surprisingly is actually how similar we all are. No matter what culture we come from, everyone has the same basic wants and dreams and desires for their life. And now we're here with Ms. Netterveen to ask her some more questions about culture. So Ms. Netterveen, what culture were you raised around when you were a child? I was born and raised in the Netherlands, so of course the culture that I grew up with and most familiar um, and comfortable with is my Dutch culture. And since we have students from all around the country here, what is the most important thing you've learned from your students about culture? What I've learned from my students is how open and appreciative they are of each other's culture. They want to know they're interested in each other's culture. And what I enjoy watching is friendships that build between these different cultures. And a lot of my students, they stay friends long after they leave Mount Verde. They go visit each other's cultures and countries to get a better understanding of what it's really like to live in that culture or country. Thanks, Andrea. It's nice to hear about our teachers' experiences here at Mont Verde. So, Summer, I have a question for you. Okay, what is it? So, your mom has four kids, April, May, and June. What's the name of the fourth child? July? No, the fourth kid would be you. Wow, that was a tough question. Questions like that one are the kinds that Gracie's asking. Let's give it over to her to see how our Montbird students answer these kinds of questions. Okay guys, I'm here with Skylar and the question for today is, what's heavier, a pound of rocks or a pound of toy cars? A pound of rocks, duh. Er, so Amy, what's heavier, a pound of toy cars or a pound of rocks? A pound of rocks. Er, I'm here with Cynthia today and the question is, what is heavier, a pound of toy cars or a pound of rocks? Rocks. Okay guys, I'm with Mr. C today and the question is, what is heavier, a pound of toy cars or a pound of rocks? It's, they're both a pound. Woo! Did yay. I get it? 
Okay, I'm with my girl, it's Blanche. So what's heavier, a pound of rocks or a pound of toy cars? A pound of rocks. Sorry, sorry, you're wrong. You're just wrong. <laughs> Mr. Robinson, what is heavier, a pound of toy cars or a pound of rocks? They're both the same. That's correct. So what's heavier, a pound of rocks or a pound of toy cars? I don't know. <laughs> so Kike, what's heavier, a pound of toy cars or a pound of rocks? They're both a pound. So you know this school is over 100 years old, right? So that means there's a lot of history that has happened on our campus. Wow, that's a long time. Let's hand it over to see if some of our students know the answers to some Montverde history questions. My name is Amber, and I'm the host of NBA Trivia. And I'm Izzy Moy, the official scorekeeper. These are our teams, Toast and Bother. Let's begin. When was Montverde Academy founded? 1912. Oh, man. Correct. Hey. Wow. What are the three main topics, topics in the MBA <coughs> mission statement? No, knowledge, character, community. Correct. <laughs> How many gyms are on campus? Three. Correct. <laughs> what type of building is located behind the boys' dorms? <coughs> okay. More dorms. No, nope. <laughs> let's move on. Oh, no. What building has two pineapples on top of it? No, science, science book. book. There you go. Uh, <laughs> team butter. Yes. What color are the walls in the fine arts auditorium? <laughs> team toast. Black? Correct. How old is the nest? Three, <clears throat> Wait, how old is, how old is oh, the nest? Three years. Nope. <laughs> Four years. Correct. <laughs> In what grade can you become a boarder? <coughs> Team Toast? Uh, seven. Correct. <laughs> what dorm is the newest? Arnold. Nope. Just get <coughs> Team Butter. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> How many soccer fields does NBA have? Eight. Nope. Eight thousand. What? He's in Sima. <laughs> no, there's five. Okay. Butter. Five? Do, do. Nope. Let's move on. There's definitely eight. <laughs> Which dorm is the oldest? I know. Nope. Mechanic? <laughs> <laughs> nope. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> How many headmasters has NBA had so far? <clears throat> Anyone? Come on, take, take it away, Monday. No. Three. No, no, yeah. Do I need to repeat the question? No. You do. <laughs> okay, let's move on. What? How many dorms are on campus? Okay, no one, no one, no one knows. <laughs> okay, that's the end. Team Toast won. I can't believe it's not butter. <laughs> <laughs> Team Toasty. Awesome job. I agree. It's always good to learn about our school. Now let's hand it over to Philip and Jonathan to see what's going on with our Eagle Athletics. Thanks, RJ Summer. First, a huge congratulations to the Bossy Girls soccer team. They played the semifinal game against Bulls here at home. The score was 2-1. to one. Please give them a round of applause. Next, track and field had a preseason meeting with Lake Mineola last Friday. Last weekend, Simog Red team and has a tournament at Tampa and Sima Go team has a match in Orlando. It did very well. Great job, guys. Today, the boys varsity lacrosse team will have a match against Apopka High School, and on Friday, they will play against All Sims Academy. Good luck to all teams playing. Well, that wraps up NBA Today Sport. Back to you, RJ Summer. Thanks, Philip and Jonathan, for updating us on how our Eagles are doing. Hey, Summer, do you have any teachers with PhDs? I personally don't, but I know someone that can help us find some. Let's go to David, who has a few teachers that have earned their doctorates. Hey, guys, now we're with Dr. Zimolzak. May I ask you a couple questions? Of course. Where and when did you get your PhD? I got my PhD from the University of Southern California, and I got it in um, August of 2015. How did you decide to get your PhD? Um, I decided to get my PhD because I knew 
uh, since probably about the time that I was your age that I wanted to be a teacher. Um, after a certain amount of time, I decided I wanted to teach at the college level. Um, so during part of my requirements as a PhD candidate, I had to teach at the college level. So I was always already sort of doing that. Um, part of my decision also came from the idea that I wanted to know a lot about one specific subject, um, which is exactly what a PhD is. Basically, imagine doing like a research report, um, but over the course of 10 years instead of like two or three weeks, maybe at the most. Um, so it was, it was a long amount of time, but it, was, it had a lot to do with specializing. It had a lot to do with wanting to teach. Now, last but not least, my advisor, Dr. Rowdy. May I ask you a couple questions? Sure. Where and when did you get your PhD? I got my PhD at the University of Miami in 1996. And how did you decide to get your PhD? Um, I decided when I was a sophomore in high school taking geometry. I know most people hate doing proofs, but I actually loved doing proofs. And I decided then that I wanted to learn as much math as possible and teach it to others. So that's when I decided I was going to try and get the PhD in math. Thank you. We are all proud of our teachers that have gone above and beyond to reach the highest level of education. Now on to desk mentions. If you haven't taken your second semester pictures, they will be taken today until 3 o'clock. This upcoming Friday, there will be a half day, and the following Monday, there will be no school. And just a reminder, there will be a TOEFL test this upcoming Saturday. Well, that wraps it up for this week's MVA Today. From all the students in the TV Studio Broadcasting course in the Stevens Media Arts Building, I'm Summer. And I'm RJ. Go, Go Eagles! Eagles.